Hey there, I'm Caroline McMullen, Agency Marketing Specialist here at Vested, and today I'm at the Vested Bar with Sherry Dodgen, Vice President of Global Corporate Marketing at Trintech. Thanks for being here, Sherry. Thanks so much, it's a pleasure. So as the Vice President of Global Corporate Marketing at Trintech, the communications you deliver often speak to nuanced ideas to both enterprise and middle market teams. How do you ensure that that messaging works across those various audiences? You know, as we're creating messaging um, that needs to apply across various um, kind of market segments, and for us, we obviously talk to large enterprises and to mid-market companies because we have solutions for both of those. I think one of the most important things that we can do is know and understand their pain points and how our solutions really help make their lives easier. And so the only way that you find that out is truly through listening first and foremost. So one of my favorite things to do is interview customers and actually spend some time with them to hear from them, like in their words, what's important about working with us, about what some of the pain points are that we've helped them solve. Um, as a matter of fact, yesterday, uh, we had a customer event in Dallas, Texas, and we had about 28 of our customers there, and I got to do six video interviews with them, kind of like I'm doing with you today, but I was on the other side asking the questions. Those types of interviews we'll be doing across all of our global events this fall, and what you start to see through each of those different kind of interviews is that there are patterns and certain things that you'll start to hear repeated over and over that really help us make sure that we're tying back to those relevant kind of um, salient points in our messaging. And to me, like those video interviews that we do with customers is really where the gold is at, right? So we share those across our organization with other stakeholders to make sure that everybody's kind of hearing this kind of firsthand too. Um, and then, you know, we encourage people to take time to listen to those or to read the case studies or things like that. Because I think one of the biggest things that we as marketers sometimes do is we start listening to all the internal speak and we forget to talk to customers. And to me, really that voice of the customer and bringing that in is how you make sure that your messaging really does resonate and stays relevant to those different audience segments. From content and product marketing to public relations, the functions of corporate marketing have to work together to get Trintech's message across. How do you ensure that all of those elements work together to complement each other and the brand as a whole? I mean, really, honestly, I think communication is the key um, and communication can never be overdone. So one of the things that we did this year is we really started off the year aligning around three message pillars that were going to be kind of the foundation for all of our marketing campaigns throughout the year and making sure that we were aligned with, you know, product marketing, with content marketing, with public relations, working with our agency here at Vested. Like we made sure everybody kind of was singing from the same songbook. Um, by doing that, and we didn't create those message pillars in a vacuum either, right? We did um, interviews with a lot of different stakeholders around the organization, then developed those message pillars, put those together, and then went back out and vetted those after we had documented them to make sure that we were on track. Um, and then from there, we then shared those out and rolled them out across the company at our sales kickoff meeting um, so that everybody kind of knew and understood where we were going and what our main message points were going to be this year um, throughout the market. By doing that, it really helped ensure that everybody would then, we created some resources for them too, like PowerPoint templates and things like that that everyone could leverage. By doing that, it's great because we're seeing now across the globe, everybody's using those same types of talk tracks and they're using those same kind of message pillars to tie back to. So whether that's um, a blog article that we write or it's a webinar that we produce, every one of those will tie back to one or two of those message pillars. And that way we've got that consistent kind of message across the organization. Um, and it's great to see as it starts to kind of flush out now um, after all of the planning and the hard work that went into it. As the leader of global corporate marketing, how do you approach communications with that global mindset? How are you working with your global teams to make Trintech communications valuable across cultures? So kind of like I talked about when we created those message pillars, we didn't do that in a vacuum. So everybody from all of our different parts of the globe was a part of that to make sure that it wasn't just resonating as a North America theme or as a UK theme, but that it was actually translatable across the globe in all parts of our market. Um, then we actually do weekly meetings. So we have a global marketing team and we actually have a weekly meeting where we go through kind of who's doing what, um, making sure everything stays aligned. And that kind of weekly, even if it ends up being only 30 minutes and not even an hour if we don't need the whole time, that kind of weekly cadence touch point has helped to really ensure that there's that alignment across the globe. And then obviously from the different kind of content assets and collateral pieces that we produce, 
Those can then be translated or rewritten if they're needed to in the local languages by our marketing managers that are in those regions. Um, and by doing that, again, we have that kind of universal message out there in the market all at the same time. Trintech CEO Teresa McIntosh personifies a smart, strong female leader in this traditionally male-dominated industry. How has her leadership impacted your work at Trintech and the organization more broadly? You know, it's funny because Teresa is one of those leaders that I have said to multiple people I would work for again and again, and I actually have. This is actually the second organization where I've worked for her. So um, we actually, it's a funny story, we met 20 plus years ago which makes us all sound a little older than we probably want to, um, on a trade show floor for like a tax and accounting CPA show. Um, and so I was working with uh, a media outlet at the time and she was working as a marketing person at one of the um, vendors there. And so through that, we developed kind of a, a friendship that turned into a working relationship over the years. And then, um, but really she is one of those people who I say culture at any organization really starts at the top and gets filtered down. And so a lot of companies will say things like, oh, we offer work-life balance for all of our employees. But then your CEO or your executive leadership team is emailing people every weekend with questions or updates or just, again, engaging over the weekend doesn't communicate like work-life balance, right? So where I think people can kind of read what your corporate values are and all of those kinds of things, I think really employees do watch to see how does that executive leadership behave and those behaviors are then what cascades down and where that culture really does get created. So I think over the last two years especially, it's been harder, right, to kind of create that culture and those um, opportunities for engagement with employees because we've all been kind of dispersed. So as we're kind of coming back together and bringing people back into the office, we're down on a kind of hybrid work model where we've got certain days of the week that people are in the office, certain days of the week that they're working from home, but it's allowing again for that collaboration and that kind of face-to-face -face time. So just like I said, it was important to have FaceTime with our customers to make sure that our messaging is staying relevant and on track with them. It's just as important that we're having FaceTime with our employees and with each other so that we have those opportunities for true collaboration because there's just nothing that replaces kind of that face-to-face -face experience. And I think that culture, again, within our executive leadership team, like they were leading by example, they were coming into the office before everybody else was, right? They're the ones who are there consistently, you know, week in, week out. Um, they're the ones that are, you know, offering different incentives and, and fun things or, you know, free lunches and things like that for people to come in. But it really is, again, looking at it from they strongly believe like we are better together when we have those opportunities and that culture from kind of the top down is really one of mutual respect, um, of integrity, of teamwork and collaboration. And so when you see those kinds of things, that's the type of organization you want to be a part of. Um, and so when I do interviews with you know potential employees, one of the things that I do say is, you know, a lot of times the words and the actions don't match places, but here they match. And so that's really why you want to be a part of that kind of culture. So, you know, I, again, I just think leaders kind of everywhere have to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, saying one thing and doing another, it doesn't compute, right? And people quickly figure out what's real. Um, and so for that culture to truly be authentic, it really does start there at the top. As a leader within a global financial services organization, what advice do you have for other communications professionals looking to build their path in the field? And what words of wisdom do you have for those just starting out? So I really think the advice that I would have is be curious and open to learning always, right? It's not, you're never done. Um, so I really find that people that get into an organization and start to connect with peers that are not just in their own department, but across different parts of the business, um, find out who those kind of industry thought leaders are, who those subject matter experts are within your own organization. Really connect with those people and ask lots and lots of questions. So anytime I've you know, joined a new company or started in a new part of a industry, that's really how I learned what I learned, right? It's not through, yes, you can read a lot of different stuff, but it's really talking to people and asking questions. And then you start to kind of learn that information um, kind of more firsthand. Those are the kind of people who then become the types that connect the dots kind of strategically as you're looking at the bigger picture for kind of what we're trying to accomplish. So um, to me, like those are the most valuable people in an organization or those who have this like kind of natural curiosity. They wanna know how everything works. They wanna know how it all connects together. They wanna be able to see kind of the bigger holistic picture. Um, the second thing I would say is 
Again, just remember to talk to customers. I think, with especially within marketing, it becomes really easy to get internal eyeballs and we start to listen to everybody thinks that they know what the customer wants or they think they know what the, you know, the market wants. But a lot of that is based on people who haven't been out and talked to customers in years. And I would say be wary of those people um, because if you're not talking to customers on a regular basis, like the business environment changes so quickly today that whatever was true five years ago is ancient history, especially now. So talking to customers like on a regular basis, at least once or twice a year, and trying to get some of that in your own personal experience, right? If you don't have access to them, what I would say is like read the case studies and listen to the video testimonials and watch the webinars and things like that that feature customers within your organization. Because the more that you hear from them, the easier it is for you to then turn that around and you're communicating back to them kind of what that messaging is that resonates with them. And then the third thing from kind of an advice perspective would just be to have fun. So like we're in marketing and you have to be creative and that creative energy gets zapped if you're not having fun. So, you know, find an organization that you can invest in that really has, you know, that team teamwork and collaboration kind of culture. And, you know, yes, work hard, but make sure you're doing it where you can have fun too. Such great advice. Thank you for being here, Sherry. Thank you. Thank you.